I'm going to show you how to use Kirchhoff's laws, um, even if you don't really need them, because I showed you this analogy. But I think it's a good idea just to know them in case you're asked. I'm um, this picture basically apply Kirchhoff's laws with this big mess of wires. So uh, we have a loop law, we have a junction law. Uh, and again, remember I said with this analogy that I gave you, it's, it's kind of the same thing here. It's all the same. So let's look at a loop law. What does that mean? That means that if you go around in a loop, in this case, consider this. If this here is my battery and I have two resistors here, I could do one loop. You see, I could do a loop that goes, let's say, this way. But can you see I can also do a loop that goes this way? There's different loops here, possibly. In this case, we've got two different loops, two different ways that coulombs could travel, right? Either the small one or the big one. Either way, in a total loop, this is the rule right here. You're supposed to say that the sum of all the potentials, potential differences, sorry, is zero. This is the first one you're supposed to do. This is called a loop law. I hope it makes sense. We learned this before that let's say um, you came out of this battery, let's say with 10 pieces of chocolate, you know, this uh, analogy that I use. So 10 volts, let's just say. Then you know that, that 10 that you gain here has to equal a total 10 lost if you do this little loop here. So that way, in this case, uh, the sum of R1 and R2 have to add up to 10 because whatever you gain, if you gain 10 volts in this case, 10 pieces of chocolate here, then maybe this is like 5 and 5 or 8 and 2 or 1 and 9. As long as they add up to 10, you're fine. And this big loop, same thing. So that means that's why in this big loop, if you gain 10, then it means you have to lose 10. So here you'd be at two, uh, 10. This would be 10 volts across this uh, resistor R3. I hope that makes some sense. So that's just the loop law. And the junction law says, uh, in this case right here, that uh, the sum of all of the currents also equals zero. This is called the junction law. Now there's another way to look at it. Uh, sometimes we look at sort of current in and current out. So just the way I've drawn it here, let's just say, um, I could consider those. Maybe I'll do them in a different color here. Let's just say here I have it coming in right here. And I could call this I zero and here I could have I could call this one here I3 going that way I can consider them this way right here I2 this is a junction what that means if I was to zoom in on that junction then I've got this happening you can see I've got currents going in and out what it really means is your currents in have to equal the currents out in this case right here if I drew them like this then what's going in in this case it's just I0 then the current going in has to equal the currents going out. So this would be uh, I2 plus I3. That's it. I don't think it's that hard, actually. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to consider then a really complicated looking circuit. This is one that looks almost impossible to solve because there's two batteries. There's two sources of potential. So you can see we've got a battery here that's 1.5 volt battery going sort of this way, doing this sort of loop or this sort of loop. And then I've got another battery doing this sort of loop or this sort of loop. So you could consider a bunch of different things, but if you keep it nice and simple, it'll be fine. For example, if we want the current in resistor one, and you can consider this Kirchhoff's laws and say, all right, well, let's, let's consider this, uh, maybe this loop right here going this way. If we consider just that loop, if we know this is a 1.5 volt battery, because there's only one device to go across, you know that the gain in um, volts should be the loss in volts. So in this case right here, if this is 1.5 volts coming from the battery, then here you have to use 1.5 volts to go across this. So already I know, see how amazingly easy that was? Again, I don't really use Kirchhoff's law. Well, I kind of use it for a loop. I like this analogy better, but it still works. So I could say, so V1 then, so V across this one right here will be 1.5 volts. The reason this is helpful is because if I know that V1 is 1.5 volts, I know R1, can you see I can solve it now? Don't we know that V equals IR? So if I want current, can you see that I can say I1, the current, you know, maybe right here or maybe right here right before it or after it. I1, I could say is V1 over R1. And see that I've got the first uh, potential difference divided by the first resistance. In this case right here, then I have uh, 1.5 over one. So that means I have I1 is just 1.5 amperes. That's it. That wasn't that hard, was it? And then look at this, the power dissipated by each resistor. You're like, oh, that seems really hard. But actually, if you just look at this carefully, we just found, keep in mind that I1, is equal to 
1.5 amperes. This would be helpful because I can use that for another loop. Watch this. What if I do a different loop? What if I do maybe this loop going around like that, that loop? I just consider this one right here. If I know that this right here, this uh, V value is nine. So in other words, this one here coming around in this loop right here, this one here is nine volts gained at the battery. Look at this carefully. Didn't we figure out this is 1.5 volts lost here? So what do you think this one right here has to be? I don't know if this will make any sense, but we can figure out V2. In other words, we can figure out the potential difference across this one because we know that the voltages have to add up or the potential differences. So in this case then, nine volts has to equal 1.5 plus something. Because remember, your gain in uh, volts has to equal your loss in volts. So 1.5 plus what gives you nine? I hope you can see that's 7.5 volts. And if I want to be really good, I can also find I2. Because if I want to find the current here, you have to be careful. It's not quite just 1.5. You have to be really, really careful if, because uh, the loop law is the one that told me about the potentials. In other words, the voltages here. Uh, in order to get I2, remember that V equals IR. So if I want I, it's equal to V over R. In this case right here, then again, um, I can say fine then that I2 then is going to be equal to V2 over R2. So in this case, let's see, V2 is 7.5 volts. Divide that by R2, which is 2, so half of 7.5, and that is 3.75 amperes. Now, why is that helpful? Um, that's because now I can figure out what goes on here. Look carefully here. If I want the power dissipated by each resistor, can you see that for around R1? Remember, I've got my equation for power dissipated. Remember, it goes, um, oops, where is it? Power dissipated is uh, P equals IV. So in this case right here, then I can say fine, around, uh, so the power in one, this resistor one, is gonna be I1 V1. So in this case right here, then I'm going to say fine. I1 is, I know that number, we found it before, right? It was 1.5 amperes. So it's 1.5 times V1, which is 1.5 volts. So I have to do 1.5 squared, and that gives me 2.25. Remember what's, what's the unit of power again? It's watts. So that's why I could say that P1 is equal to 2.25 watts. And I'm doing it to three significant figures, so we're fine. There we go, that's the first answer. And for the second one, around R2, I can say then that P2 in the same way is I2 V2. And let's see, what's I2? I2 is 3.75 times V2, which is 7.5. So 3.75 times 7.5, just using my calculator, and I get 28.1, let's just say. So I could say that, I could say P2 is 28.1 watts. Whoops, I made a bad W there. Let me just fix it up. So this is again to three significant figures. So you can see how you can either use Kirchhoff's laws or just be careful with this electricity analogy I showed you, but you can actually solve these kind of questions. So they don't have to be as crazy as they seem. You just really take your time, think about different loops, and you can do it.